Good afternoon, everybody. I would like to call this meeting to order of the Northern Nevada Water Planning Commission on this date of April 3rd, 2019. May I have a roll call? Daniel Henderson. Michael Demartini. Here. Bill Houck. Here. Michael Drinkwater. Here. John Enlow. Here. John Flansburg. Here. Mickey Hazelwood. Here. John Martini. John Combs. Here. Dave Solero. Here. Mervyn Wright. Here. John Zimmerman. Here. Harry Fonstock. Thomas Payette. Here. Mylan Nagayan. Cindy Turchek. Ron Penrose. We have a quorum. Uh, thank you. Now is the time for public comments um, that's limited to three minutes per person. And I see no public comment cards, and nobody uh, wishes to make a public comment, so we'll go on to the approval of the agenda for possible action. We have a motion to approve from Commissioner Flansburg and a second by uh, Commissioner Zimmerman. Uh, all those in favor? Or have, Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Our next item is selection of the new chair and vice chair for the term of April 2019 to April 2020 with possible direction to staff. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, in your staff report, I've uh, included under previous action the succession of every chairman that we've had since 2008, and as it happens, Every um, representation on the West, on the Northern Nevada Water Planning Commission has served chairman uh, except for the Pyramid Lake Paiute tribe. So that means that uh, Commissioner Wright would be the, uh, the sole nomination if he would accept the, uh, uh, the nomination as chairman. I'll accept. We have an acceptance of the chair by uh, Commissioner Wright of the Pyramid Lake Paiute tribe. Is there any objection? Do we need a vote on this? Oh. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. All right, congratulations. Uh, and at this Chair point, Wilson. I'm gonna turn over the gavel to Commissioner Wright and change chairs. No, that's okay. I think, we're, I think we'll be okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you wanna sit in that chair? Yeah, the uh, we'll, gavel. Uh, we'll switch chairs at the next meeting. Okay. I appreciate it, um, and I want to thank the commissioners for uh, support. And um, I'll do my best to, um, you know, move us through the agenda and, you know, get us these uh, topics and work with the staff. And um, so we'll get back into the agenda, which we have. Uh, next item is the approval of the minutes from February six. Excuse me. Um, we need to elect a vice chair. Oh, I, I'm sorry. Excuse. Call for nominations. Okay, so I'll call for nominations for the vice chair for the commission. I'll make a motion for Bill Houck to serve as vice chair. Okay, we have a motion and a second for uh, Bill Houck for vice chair. Uh, and he'll accept. Uh, are there any other uh, nominations? Okay, I'll close the nominations for vice chair. And I guess we'll take a vote. Uh, all in favor for Bill Houck serving as the vice chair for the Northern Nevada Water Planning Commission? Say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Bill. Okay. Are we ready to roll? Okay. We'll move on then to item number five on the agenda, which is approval of the minutes from February 6th and March 6th, 2019 meetings. For possible action, got a motion uh, to approve from Mr. Zimmerman. Second. Seconded. Um, Mr. Solero. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, item number six on the agenda is review, discussion, and possible recommendations to the Western Regional Water Commission to approve a request by the University of Nevada, Reno to readjust certain task completion dates 
and reallocate previously approved funding for fiscal years 2018 to 2019 and 2019 to 2020 to continue the advanced water treatment technology demonstration project. Jim Smitherman. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, last month, Dr. Pagila from UNR and the Nevada Water Innovation Institute came in and presented a brief status report on this project, the Advanced Water Treatment Technologies Demonstration Project, as, uh, as part of his report on kind of the overall activities of the uh, Water Innovation Institute. Um, what he didn't explain and the request wasn't quite ready to go at that time, but um, uh, he did explain that having completed uh, tasks uh, one through four that the Water Institute in Water Innovation Institute is prepared for the Reno Stead Water Reclamation Facility Demonstration Project. That project, um, once it's up and running, will be uh, treating uh, effluent to A plus water quality and eventually um, ultimately injecting that water underground and then monitoring, demonstrating that uh, the, the demonstration, or demonstrating the uh, underground injection uh, type of uh, transport of, of uh, treated effluent into the, uh, into the aquifer. Um, what has uh, has occurred though is there are have, there have been some delays in building um, and instrumenting the third of the three treatment trailers that will be used up there and um, there are others um, involved in putting that trailer together others other rather than uh, than UNR and so um, for circumstances beyond um, the university's control uh, the completion of the next two tasks uh, five and six um, he's requesting that we push those out in time. And so they, they started on time because he was able to start both tasks on the existing trailers that are now at the South Truckee Meadows Water Reclamation Facility, but the third trailer is the one that, uh, that's still outstanding. So task five, um, treatment system equipment pro procurement and installation, it's underway, and he's uh, shown on the uh, revised project schedule that that is about 50% complete. Um, has been, he's requesting that that be moved out to the summer of this year. It was originally scheduled to, uh, um, to be completed summer of, of last year, 2018. And then uh, task six, uh, treatment system shakedown and startup, uh, co the completion um, has shifted to uh, this summer, 2019, from summer of 2018 as well. So really what we're doing is truing up the timeline for um, the final, uh, well, I, tasks five and six, they're not the final two um, tasks, and then uh, shifting the appropriate amount of uh, funding, about uh, $97,000 from this fiscal year into next fiscal year so we can use that to complete the tasks. So the overall uh, completion date um, of June 2020 and the overall uh, budget amount for the entire project are unchanged. He's just asking to shift things uh, later in time into next fiscal year. So with that, I would I turn it back to you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, are there any questions from the commission? Hearing none, um, this will entertain a motion to accept the report and approve the a adjustment and the budget yes. adjustments. the recommendation to the Western Region of Water Commission for approval of UNR's request to readjust the task completion date and reallocate funding from the project as described in the submitted schedule. Okay, we have a motion from Mr. Enloe. Do we have a second? Second. Motion seconded. Mr. Houck. Any further discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, next item on the agenda is the report on the 2018 snowpack and water supply. Bill Hout, Chucky Meadows Water Authority.
It was a decent month for us. We actually ended up uh, uh, closing out the month of January about normal conditions. Uh, on February 2nd, uh, our friend Punxsutawney Phil uh, was rousted from his den and came out of his lair and did not see his shadow, so he forecasted an early spring. Well, he was about as wrong as he could be. Thank you. He, he was about as wrong as he could be. Uh, it was anything but an early spring, and uh, February actually ended up being one of the biggest uh, Februarys in recorded history. It was a blockbuster month in terms of precipitation for the Sierra Nevada. Um, in fact, at the uh, NRCS snow tail site on Mount Rose, uh, precip was recorded 24 out of 28 days. Uh, the uh, Squaw Valley Ski Resort uh, received uh, in excess of 26 feet of snow uh, a new record for, for that ski resort. It was truly a staggering month uh, in terms of snowfall, and uh, many new records were set. And actually, by the end of the month, um, there was enough, more than enough snow up there that uh, both the Tahoe and Truckee basins had already exceeded their full winter time amounts just by the end of February. So truly a staggering month, and uh, by any measure, an above average winter even before March began. In this map, you can see uh, in Northern California, you can see uh, all the basins, uh, respectively, the Truckee, Tahoe, Carson, and Walker basins, all significantly above average as of this morning. Uh, I've noticed the Tahoe Basin actually above 200% of average as far as uh, snow water content in, in the snowpack. Um, so uh, the supply outlook for Northern Nevada is, uh, by any measure, uh, uh, excellent at this point. Um, the snowpack, as measured on April 1st, as you can see in this graph uh, for the Truckee Basin, is uh, actually going to be one for the records as well. Not uh, quite as large as 2017, but certainly uh, as big or bigger than 2011 and uh, 1995. It's definitely, uh, definitely one of the big ones. And you can clearly see in this uh, NRCS uh, snow water equivalent graphic, you can see the black line is the amount of water content in the snowpack. That's the black line. You can see right above that, or actually right on that for today, is 2011. So we are every bit as, as big as uh, 2011 right now. Not quite as big as 2017, which is the pink line above, but uh, clearly, uh, clearly a big, big year in terms of uh, uh, snowfall for the, the Tahoe Basin and the Truckee Basin. Basically the same theme, just, just huge, huge winter for us. And stream flow runoff forecasts are, uh, are, are uh, equally as impressive for both the Tahoe and, and the Truckee River Basin this year. Um, you can see in this hydrograph of Lake Tahoe, you can first thing you'll see is uh, uh, we have actual, and then the lighter blue line is what's projected through the rest of the calendar year. You can see that Lake Tahoe is going to fill for the third year in a row. That doesn't happen very often. The latest projection as of this morning, I had to take a wag at it. But we're looking about you know, 180 to 190% of normal runoff into Lake Tahoe. Um, the early February forecasts had showed uh, there was going to be a lot more runoff coming in than we had room for. So as of February 21st, we've been doing what's called precautionary drawdowns out of Lake Tahoe, making room for the water that's yet to come. And you can see the 50% COE, the chance of exceedance, that's the, the best, best forecast. 50% chance there could be less, 50% chance there could be more runoff. But the best number right now is about 2.4 feet. So 2.4 more feet of water coming into Lake Tahoe between now and high. If you were to close the gates, right now there's about 1.2 feet of water. So we're still moving water out of Tahoe at this point. And theme is basically the same throughout the entire Truckee River system. Every reservoir in the system is not only uh, going to fill this year, but going to spill. Um, the notable exception is Boca Reservoir, while it will fill on paper. Uh, due to uh, Bureau Reclamation construction work that's commencing right now on, on the downstream face of the dam uh, to retrofit the dam for uh, today's seismic um, um, capabilities. Uh, the dam's only going to get uh, about half full this year, so about half storage on Boca, and the road will be closed over the dam uh, this summer and next summer, unfortunately, but uh, for those improvements. But 
a um, lot of water in the system, uh, big flows, big flows at the California Nevada state line, at the USGS ferret gauge, uh, particularly, um, you know, from basically from now where we're at 25, 2600 CFS, uh, at least through June, well into July, so uh, big flows. And you can see here on this graph, I, I took a stab at these numbers this morning as well. Uh, the projections are over 200% of average, uh, we're thinking right now. And just a, just a huge year, in a, in a normal year, you get about 260,000 acre feet of unimpaired runoff uh, would cross the state line. And this year we're looking well over 500,000. So big, big, big year. So uh, big flows through July, uh, normal flows then the rest of the year and, and likely the next three years because when Lake Tahoe fills and we go into summer with uh, full reservoirs upstream, we know we have a water supply for a community for the next probably three years despite what happens uh, with, uh, with, the, with the weather the next three years. And that means required rates of flow at the California Nevada state line at the USGS Farage gauge will be met. So all water rights for downstream um, uh, water right holders will be met for the next three years and we, we know where our water supply is coming from and that's a great thing for the Truckee Meadows Water Authority because between 80 and 85 percent of our water on an annual basis is diverted directly from the Truckee River. So it was a big year. Uh, travel over the past was, was extremely hectic. Some people took to extreme measures to clear the uh, snow off the driveway out of, just clearly out of frustration but they tell us spring's on the way, right? So with that, I'll take questions. What can you tell us about Lahontan? Lahontan, uh, just as a couple weeks ago, John, um, they decided they were gonna start doing precautionary drawdowns as well. Uh, the forecast um, in February wasn't showing that it was gonna fill quite uh, to, to the rim, to the flashboards, but uh, the most recent forecast showed that it was, and so they just started making precautionary uh, releases from Lahontan as well. So big, big water year on the Carson as well. So, and, and when there's a big water year on the Carson, it means no diversions are uh, taking place from the Truckee to Lahontan. So all the water and all uh, that's going down the Truckee and not diverted, uh, you know, past, uh, uh, past Tamwa and, and, and Sparks, most of it's going right to the Pyramid Lake. Pyramid Lake, um, since January, we recorded about one and a half feet uh, rise. And in, in 17, from the 17 uh, runoffs, it, it rose about 11 feet. And um, so we're, based on those uh, NRCS forecasts, we're looking at possible another six more feet. So, yeah. Yeah, and, and, that, uh, and that's great because in, in a normal year, that lake declines about a foot or so just with a normal runoff. So you get a year like this to get you know an extra four or five feet going the other direction. That's huge. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Okay, um, next item on the agenda is a report on legislative activities, including bill draft requests and bills pending in the 2019 session of the Nevada legislature that may affect or are of interest to the Western Water Planning, Western, Western Region Water Planning Commission and Northern Nevada Water Planning Commission, John Rhodes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. For the record, I'm John Rhodes, legal counsel out to you today an up-to-date staff report and bill tracking list that lists all of the bills current as of yesterday that we are watching and that there's two BDRs that we still have on the list and 28 bills that we're tracking. That includes all of the bills that have been uh, considered by the legislative subcommittee of the Western Regional Water Commission except SB 280, that didn't get on the list, and the Legislative Subcommittee, I believe, is going to discuss that this when they meet this Friday at 1.30. That is a bill um, that would change the definition of navigable waters. Tumwa opposed that bill. There was um, some indication from the WRWC Subcommittee that they wanted to go to a opposed position, and we will uh, clear that up this Friday. The 
other item that I wanted to call to your attention was AB 371. That is a bill that makes a lot of significant changes to the public records law. Tumwa has a opposed as written position on that and the legislative subcommittee at its meeting last Tuesday also um, recommended and opposed as written position. All of these bills on the current list that I gave you have been approved by the Western Regional, the positions rather indicated thereon have been uh, approved by the Western Regional Water Commission itself, except for the two bills that I just mentioned. That would be uh, SB 280 and uh, AB 371. And as, in, as is the case in most years, uh, the Western Regional Water Commission is neutral uh, watch on most of these bills, but that one has opposition. Also on this coming Friday, the legislative subcommittee is going to discuss SB 250, which was a water rights bill dealing with uh, water rights that are dedicated to public entities to support development and uh, what must, how those rights must be held uh, in future to support that development. Tumwa was discussing, Tumwa moved to a support position on that, and I think the legislative uh, sub, subcommittee wanted to discuss that further because uh, it was a bill that really didn't apply to this area. They didn't think at first. Uh, Tumwa was successful in getting some changes to that bill that moved them to a support position, and that's what our legislative uh, subcommittee will be talking about on Friday. And if I misstated any of the Tumwa stuff, please, some of the Tumwa people jump in. And that's all I had for you today, unless you have any questions. Are there any questions of the commission? Yes, Mr. Enlow. Yes. And let me look at that. It just uh, creates an, a state advisory board of water resources planning and drought resiliency. And uh, if, if I haven't uh, really studied the bill, uh, it is an exempt bill, so it's going to get some discussion. It's got some legs, it looks like. And uh, it's just uh, the state executive branch, the governor's office, getting involved uh, in water uh, issues as a result of our last drought. So we'll keep an eye on that. But it would create that board. That's what it does. Yeah, are there any other questions? I have a question on um, AB 51 on the front page. Sure. Um, what can you, uh, can you share any information or insights on AB 51? That's a technical water rights bill. I have the language uh, I can go through here. Let's see, AB 51. The summary says, requiring the state engineer to adopt regulations relating to the conjunctive management of groundwater and surface water. So section three of the bill would require the state engineer to adopt regulations related to the conjunctive management of groundwater and surface water. The regulations may include without limitation requirements or guidelines for establishing mitigation plans, the creation of a program for conjunctive management of groundwater and surface water in a particular hydrographic basin to mitigate conflicts. Is this the bill that they're referring to as the 3M bill? The, the mitigation management and monitoring? So this is similar type stuff, but it, it's technical things. I, I'll have to look up the status of that bill right now for you and report back at, uh, at your next meeting. But uh, this is generated out of the state engineer's office, I believe. That's about all I know about it at this point. Okay, thank you. Okay, there, are there any other questions? And no action required here, so. Great, uh, thank you. All right, thank you. All right, we'll move on to the um, program manager's report, Jim Smitherman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I've got in your program manager's report uh, First off, uh, attachment 9A is the status report on projects and, uh, and work plan items. Uh, so it's just a list of those projects that we have underway right now and, and roughly their, their percent completion. A um, Couple of projects are, um, have been completed so far this year. That's the Bedell Flat uh, rapid infiltration 
uh, basin study. That was one that the Truckee Meadows Water Authority um, conducted. Uh, positive results from that one. We have a full report um, on file uh, for, that re um, for that project, and so that one is 100% complete. And then also uh, the following on the list is just the, uh, uh, the second of three installments of $25,000 to support the, uh, uh, the Nevada Water Innovation Institute. On the flip side of that page is uh, the financial status report, and so our uh, revenues from the uh, water surcharge, 1.5% uh, surcharge, is it's up about 5.7% from last year, um, which is a good sign, and it looks like we're well on track to, uh, to meet the goal and probably exceed um, what we budgeted, the uh, 1.47 uh, million uh, by the end of the fiscal year. And then down in expenditures, we're, uh, uh, we're well under what we budgeted as far as our expenditures, and, uh, and I believe we're on track to uh, finish out with the, uh, about the amount that's listed under the actual plus PO column. That is approximately what we had included in the estimate to complete when we put the budget together um, and presented it to you last meeting. And so we're well on the track to be uh, 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 in the black all the way through this fiscal year and have uh, um, a, a significant cash reserve moving into next fiscal year. So with that, I'll turn it back to you, Mr. Chairman, for any questions. Okay, are there any questions regarding the report from Mr. Smitherton? Okay, thank you, Jim. All right. Um, Next item on the agenda is a discussion regarding location and possible agenda items for the May 2019 Northern Nevada Water Planning Commission meeting and future meetings and possible direction to staff. Jim Smitherman. Okay, Jim Smitherman again. Uh, May 1st would be the date of our next uh, regularly scheduled meeting. That would take place at 1.30 in this room. Um, what we would have queued up for you for agenda items next time is we're going to start bringing in reports on the projects that we have ongoing that we're expecting to uh, renew or amend amendment or agreements to keep them going forward. So those that we'd be looking at next meeting would be the uh, regional precipitation gauge monitoring program. That's one that DRI is doing. And these are the uh, precipitation gauges that are uh, distributed up through the northern part of uh, our, our two points fairly far north of here, not all the way up to the Oregon border, but up into northern uh, Washoe County. Uh, the next one is uh, the Washoe Evapotranspiration Project. Also, uh, DRI uh, manages that one. That's the project where we have uh, four or five uh, weather stations throughout the region that report to a website that will ultimately um, instruct how long your run time should be for certain kinds of, uh, of irrigation sprinkler heads. Uh, the next project is Tumwa's uh, Water Usage Review, Review Program. So we usually get an annual report on, on how they did on that one and with a request for uh, funding for the following year. And then finally, the uh, NPDES Stormwater Management Program that is uh, um, headed by the City of Reno on behalf of the, of the, re the region, Reno Sparks and Washoe County. Uh, that's about $260,000 that we support that program with. Um, um, annually for, for the last several years. And so we'd, we'd get a report and a funding request for that as well. So those are the four items that I have uh, on deck for our next meeting, and I would turn it back to the commission for um, requests, recommendations for other items. Okay, are there any uh, comments or recommendations regarding the um, possible agenda items for the May 2019 meeting? Okay, so hearing none, I'll entertain a motion then uh, to approve the, uh, is that, is that we're doing here, to, is approving the um, May 2019 meeting agenda? Yeah, the May 1st, 2019 meeting agenda and, and uh, okay. location and time. I'll entertain a motion to approve. The I'll I'll make a motion to uh, um, approve the uh, items as uh, given by Jim uh, with our for our May first. Is that what you said, yes. Jim? May first meeting at this location um, at one thirty. Motion, motion made and seconded. Um, and uh, any 
further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, next item on the agenda is commission comments. Any commissioners have any comments? Mr. Flansbury. I'd just like to thank uh, Michael Martini for his service as chairman and uh, certainly uh, um, welcome uh, our new chairman, it's Mervyn. So right. thank you for taking that on and also our vice chair, Bill Houck. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate you coming on board, Mr. Wright. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, thank you. Um, I, I guess the only comment I have is, um, you know, just uh, I had forwarded the memo to our staff and got some thoughts from them, and they were encouraging uh, and uh, positive. And even as busy as I am, I, I uh, talked to you earlier today and, and uh, probably want to talk to you a little bit more after the meeting. Um, but uh, you know, I appreciate uh, again appreciate the support here, and, and uh, I think uh, you know one of the one of the comments from our staff was was to uh, I think it's the first time you know uh, the Pyramid Lake Tribe is chair of the commission. So as I said, I'll do my best and, and continue to support you know the efforts of the commission. So thank you. Any other comments? Okay. Okay, we'll move on then, staff comments. Well, um, echoing uh, Commissioner Flansburg's, uh, thank you, uh, outgoing uh, Chairman uh, DiMartini, thanks for your service for a year, and then we welcome on Mervyn. Uh, I look forward to, to working with you um, through, your, uh, through your position as chair. And, and I'm happy to hear that you got support from, um, from your coworkers yeah. and, and others out of the tribe. So yeah, good, good news. And this, this is historic, this is the first time that uh, that the Pyramid Lake Paiute Tribe has been chairman of the uh, of the commission. So, looking forward to a good year. All right, thank you. All right, thank you. Any more comments from the staff? No more comments from the staff. So, next item on the agenda is public comments. A three minute time limit per person. I don't have any cards and don't see anybody coming forward. So, we'll move on then to our item number fourteen, which is adjournment. I've got a motion to adjourn and a second. All in favor? Aye. Motion carries.